And now for something completely different. The 2021 Louis Erard Alain Silverstein Regulator. This watch was announced in the summer of 2021 and I immediately wanted it. But as a classic overthinker, I gave myself a little time to consider the pros and cons and weigh my options. And in the couple of days it took me to decide, all 178 pieces sold out. Or so it seemed. Then last week I got word from the only Louis Arard authorized dealer in the United States. They told me one had arrived after being held for them in Switzerland. And a day later, this funky monkey was on my wrist and in my collection. There's just so much weirdness going on here. It's okay to be confused or even upset. These feelings are natural and you're in a safe space. I think the best way to explain this watch and why I like it so much is to talk about the person who designed it. Alain Silberstein is a French architect who moved into watch design in the 1980s. In 1987, he launched his first watch under his own brand, the Alain Silberstein Chrono Bauhaus a piece featuring serious watchmaking and unserious design. And that seems to be Silverstein's thing. Excellence in craft, joy in presentation. More recently, Alain Silverstein has been designing watches for other Swiss brands like Louis Arard and high horologist MBNF. This watch was part of a three-piece limited release. There's this regulator, a mono pusher chronograph, and a day-date watch called La Semaine. Each of these Erard Silverstein collaboration watches was limited to only 178 pieces. And I got my favorite of the bunch, the regulator. A regulator is a type of timepiece which emphasizes the minutes hand and usually puts the hour hand and seconds hand in a subdial. The blue minutes hand is on the central axis and is the largest on the dial. The yellow squiggly seconds hand is at 6 o'clock and the hour hand is the red triangle on the silver subdial. Reading the watch takes some retraining, but after a few glances, it's pretty easy. I find that I usually already know what hour it is and really only need the minutes hand most of the time. So having the hour hand relegated to a smaller size actually makes some sense to me. The case is 40 millimeters across, 11.6 millimeters thick, and 47 millimeters long. The lugs are 22 millimeters apart and can take other straps, though I haven't tried any. I'm looking forward to experimenting. The watch has 100 meters of water resistance, and it comes on this nylon strap that uses a hook and loop system to stay closed. It's basically Velcro, but not made by Velcro. This strap seems identical to ones I've seen on Apple watches, and it's very comfortable on my 7-inch wrist. The case is made of two kinds of titanium. The matte gray case is grade 2 titanium, and the polished lugs are grade 5. Because it uses titanium instead of steel, the watch is pretty light. It weighs only 68 grams, even with the strap. The watch sells for, or sold for, $3,850. Inside is the Salita SW266 regulator movement. It's an automatic with 38 hours of power reserve and a Louis Arard rotor weight. Aside from having a regulator layout, it's nothing special. What is special is obviously the design of the watch. The wild dial colors are probably what draws the most immediate attention, but the entire package is kind of unexpected. The strap I've mentioned, just like one I've had on Apple Watches, and where I've often thought, why don't watch companies do something this good? What I specifically like about this is that it can be sized in a nearly infinite amount of lengths. It's also very breathable. The floating lugs remind me of similar brand cards that I've seen from Debutun and Porsche Design, to me, it's a refreshing take on an element that seems like an afterthought in many watch designs. And then there's the dial. Black, silver, vivid primary colors and primary shapes. This is classic Alain Silverstein. His designs have foundations in the German Bauhaus style, but to my eyes, they're more elaborate and more playful. Silberstein's watch designs remind me most of the work that came from the Milan-based Memphis group in the 1980s. While his watches stick to primary colors, I think the spirit of the Memphis group comes across in his watches. One subtle design element that I really like here is the raised chapter ring along the outside of the dial. It adds a nice touch of depth. 
Between the light case, the 11.6mm slimness, and the strap, the regulator is perfectly comfortable on my 18cm wrist. It's almost invisible on the wrist, which is a rare thing to say about a mechanical watch. My only complaint about the watch is that the conical crown is difficult to grip. Setting the watch is easy, but winding is hard without any sort of knurling or facets. The crown is slippery, much like the slope that is watch collecting. But I expect that a lot of you have many more complaints about this watch, and that's fine. I get that this watch might be offensive to some people. And to you I say, lighten the f up. Kidding. To you I say, I respect that. If we all had the same taste, the world would be boring. I often talk about how watch collecting is a hobby that should be fun. We don't need watches, and especially not mechanical ones. And so I think watch design should reflect that admission. Well, this is me putting my money and my wrist where my mouth is. This is me being clear that my goal with this hobby is to have fun and be awed and laugh at my fellow nerds and especially at me.